Dan, it's an honor to have you back here. Flint, thank you so much for coming. It's awesome to have you here. Oh, it's fun to be here. <laughs> this is a question for Flint. This is a, I guess, a, a particular question. You were the story consultant on Transformers the movie. I think you're gonna, you have quite a few uh, interesting facts about that. How much were you just a consultant? How much were your, were your basically your hands all over the movie? Uh, so just tying in the movie with what would come after that, season three. Right. In season three, uh, there was a scene when Rodimus Prime, uh, it's supposed to be a death scene, turns out it's not. He went into the Matrix and he said, my time in the light is short. RC says, that's what Optimus Prime said when he was dying. He'd, Optimus Prime in the final version of the movie did not say that. Is that line from one of the versions of the drafts? What a Good. great question. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Uh, I was sitting here sweating for him the whole yeah, time. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm still sweating it. Yeah, Sorry. But I, okay. Now you have to remember this is all 30 years ago, yeah. so yeah. I'm accessing this hard drive that's like, you know, it's like a version 1.0, you know, 10 gig, 10 megabyte, it's not working too well, but um, yeah, answer the first question. Yeah, I, basically my history on the, on the Transformer movie was, I was on, I was a, a co-producer, an associate producer, I can't remember what I was at that point, and I was a story editor and sometimes writer. But usually I would write defensively if a script fell out, you know, we got a draft in that really we didn't think we could salvage. You know, I was not really around to write in the show. And um, because, I, you know, it's the story editor's job is, you know, we have a bunch of different writers writing a show. And the story editor's job is to make it all one show. And no writer can know what we did in the five scripts before it and the five scripts after it that somebody else wrote. So we try to you know, make it all one cohesive whole or how we were playing certain characters. I mean, you know, the Bible for the show was like this thick and, right. you know, you, you can't ask anybody to internalize all that. And remember, the, sh the shows didn't mostly exist because we were busy making them so they couldn't tell them to go watch old episodes and we were always introducing new characters. Sorry, that's a really long explanation for... So what happened with the movie is I was blissfully una unaware of the movie. And long before I was at Sunbow, there was a guy named Ron Friedman, who I think wrote the G.I. Joe pilot and was, was contracted to Sunbow. To, and, and his agent put in the contract, it, that's, this is a good agent, by the way, that he would write any movies that came out of these shows. Oh. Now, remember, in you know, 1984, nobody was doing animated movies. You know, animation would hit the world like a hurricane five years later. But at that moment... You know, it, it, this is incredibly disreputable. <laughs> you know, it, 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 nobody's making animated movies. Disney come out with one every 200 years, and then there'd be some like art damage stuff coming out of a foreign country at an art theater. But there, there weren't animated movies then like there are now. And so nobody ever thought there'd be a movie. And so the first thing I heard about the movie, other than just vaguely knowing there was one, but like I never really believed they were going to make a movie out of Transformers. I just figured this was some you know, corporate hype or something. Yeah, I mean, it, to the extent that it even you know, hit my processors. Remember, we're trying to make 65 episodes of the show, and I'm pinch hitting and writing G.I. Joe episodes at this point. So I had no processing power left on the other side of my brain to know what was happening. This is a very long answer to the question, but it's a question I'm asked a lot, and I just want to stabilize it. One day, Jay Bacall said, oh, we just got the first draft of the Transformer movie in. Uh, and I said, oh, <laughs> you know, that's interesting. <laughs> you know, and he said, well, it needs some work, you know, and, and you know, I'm going to come out and let's, let's go over it. Joe and Tom being Tom Griffin and Joe Bacall, or Joe Bacall and Tom Griffin, who headed up Griffin Bacall, the ad agency of which Sunbow was the company. Remember, they're Hasbro's ad agency, and so we're the production company. Um, you felt that, you know, just want us to, to get in and just figure out what we do with this. And so Jay comes out and one thing led to another and kind of at nobody's behest, we write an entirely new movie the following week. We used some of Ron's stuff and, and all that. And Ron's stuff, there's brilliant stuff in there. It just didn't, and this is not Ron Friedman's fault. This is called being a writer in the entertainment business. Yeah, I've written incoherent scripts too. And that is you get so many notes from so many people and you're pressured to come up with the first draft by a certain day. So you take everybody's note and idea and you throw it in there and knowing that it doesn't make any sense. But you just put it in there so there's something to talk about. 
So there's no there's no slur on Ron Friedman in this. But the, the script didn't, you know, wasn't a cohesive thing. And so we took it upon ourselves to write a script over the next week. So we wrote an entire movie in a week. You know, Jay was living on my couch and, you know, and, and we sat there and wrote it. We were convinced this was the greatest script ever written by anybody for any reason. Um, and, you know, like that Orson I'm Welles, sure it you know, was. If, he, if he came and did Unicron, he'd realize Citizen Kane was number two. Uh, and, uh, um, you know, and uh, however, you know, Joe and Tom didn't share our enthusiasm, uh, you know, when we got back. But nevertheless, there was the script called The Secret of Cybertron which was our version of the Transformer movie, which continued to be more and more and more influential in the series. And frankly, a lot of the thinking of it became, you know, what was Five Faces of Darkness, which you could look at as sort of a second Transformers movie, except the animation kind of sagged. Um, <laughs> but, uh, um, so anyway, that script, nobody has a copy of it. I think there were, the initial distribution was five people. It was you know, Jay and I and Joe and Tom and Roger Slifer. And, um, and maybe Carol Weitzman had a copy and Hildy Mesnick had a copy. And I keep hoping I'm going to find one in sort of my Ark of the Covenant storage box somewhere in my, in my thing, but I haven't. So, and then after that, we started what would become the Transformer movie. And that would go on over the next... I would put this somewhere around February of, I want to say, 85 that we started this process, because I think it was summer of 85. I could be lying to you, but I think it was summer of 85 that I was out in New York for I don't know, six weeks, right across the street from Sunbow, uh, and this kind of makes it relevant to today, in the Grand Hyatt, which was Donald Trump's first hotel in New York. Um, <laughs> You're rewriting the script, and then 20 other drafts came after that, and everybody had notes, and every, I mean, the, you know, the final script is not, you know, my work or Ron Friedman's work. It's a collaborative work of God knows how many people. It's just I was the guy that input it and tried to gel it all together. So for, the, uh, for that line, for that lost Optimus Prime line then, would you think it was something that was in the one of the many scripts Yes, you uh, my guess is I think you nailed it. I, here, okay, now bear in mind, Yes, there are many right. scripts, and then after that, there are many storyboards. Then there, and now, animation is an extremely effective, you know, efficient medium. You don't go shoot a bunch of scenes. You don't shoot coverage. You don't have a master. Okay, you know, it's not like live action. You know, you're very efficient about it, but you still cut things out. You're over length. It doesn't make sense anymore. It's dragging the movie down. I mean, editorial is a very real part of the process. You figure, you write a script three times. You write the script when you write it. You write it when you're in production. And then you rewrite it in editing. You know, and that's so, yeah, I would imagine that line fell out, and at that point I was so dazed and unaware of it, I assumed it was still in and referenced it in the script. That's, how's that for a really long answer to your question? Thank you, it was an awesome answer, thank you.